Okay, there goes the tension again. It seems like it goes up easiest when the center struts equalize. In other words, when the pistons pop out and it's kind of equalize the pressure. There they go up. Let's see if those pistons come out. Nope, it's going straight in. Is that worker there had a puff of his uh, There it goes. Pressure on the cable. Cables, not singular. And now in case you didn't know, but these cables, they go up to what we call the blur. And one cable comes from each corner. And this is all run by solar power. There's solar panels on the top of that lid, the blur. And batteries and motors, all from Tesla. So this booster could be anywhere, anywhere. Out in the middle of the desert, on the ocean, and the legs would still fold with no external power. It's incredible engineering. Just below the bucket, you can see the push rod. There it is. Just coming out below the bucket. That's what pushes the leg open, then gravity takes over from there, and the legs just fall. Even when falling from space. By that time, it slowed down enough for gravity to take over. It's really a simple design. The most complex part is what is inside of those struts that are folding up there. We personally don't believe it's a crushed core because each booster, every time they land, lands a different height off the deck. If there was a crushed core in there to get crushed every time, it would have to be replaced. And they're not gonna replace it every time and they don't replace it every time. So it's a hydraulic gas or fluid that absorbs and then locks into place. They're taking a close look at that push rod and the latching mechanism. They had an incident a few launches ago where the latching me mechanism did not hold. And a single cable did not hold. So the leg came down. Didn't hurt anybody, of course nobody was in the way. You can see the covers are already on the engines down here. So, you know, they don't care that they got to duct tape them. But this baby's coming straight off the octograbber and on to the transporter. That saved so much time.
We're 99% sure that's what they did on when the booster landed on land. They lift the crane up, put the cap on, lift the legs, and load it. One day, we truly believe that they'll have a crane that comes out of the drone ship, or silly, and like folds up in place, just, just big enough to lift the, just big enough to lift, lift the blur, and get it on the top, and on their way back, they can start lifting legs. Therefore, speeding up even more the whole process. This two flight booster. 60.2 is uh, so much cleaner than the boost, or I mean this two flight booster. So much cleaner than the six flight booster. There's the 60 right there, in case you haven't seen it, between the legs. We go up and they're blocking the pusher pusher rod but they're keeping an eye on it they're keeping an eye on it but they're blocking it and that's a big piston that's a lot of weight when it falls the gravity It's amazing that just solar power is pulling that leg up. No, it's not amazing when you think about SpaceX and Tesla, what they know how to do in Solar City, what they know how to do with solar energy. Now I can see the piston from the center is starting to come out a little ways. You can barely see it on the left there. It's starting to equalize a bit. So if they come up slow, the pistons start equalizing with each other. Oh, there's a head shake. Let's hope that's not a... Drop her back down, boys. Let's hope that's not what it is. He was shaking his head. They're talking to Hawthorne the whole time they're doing this.
I'll tell you, those legs and that blur, that device that's on the cap is so different when these guys first landed boosters. They were climbing up on top of the cap just hoping it was latched right. Definitely no lift, leg lifting ability. They're waiting for that to equalize. I don't know if we've ever missed a booster. It's coming to the port. There's your 6 0 again up high. But this is an amazing feat of engineering right here. The blur. Self power, remote control, electric motors, batteries, and cables with tension. All designed for this anywhere. And there you have it. Hey, thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll wait a second to make sure it stays latched, but I know it will. That won't ever happen again. It's a beautiful thing to see this kind of engineering. Always working closer to being able to land in a precise location and launch again from that same location. Yeah, so that's that's the uh, Octagrabber there. And only on the newer models of the Block 5. Like, uh, you know, this is 6.2. Probably 6.0 on up. They are. They are doing it right off the drone ship. And over here you can see the crane. No, you can't. But you, there are cranes over there to lift it right onto the transporter. Yeah, and that octagrabber is quite a piece of engineering also. Right here you can see these uh, chrome silvery things. They attach those on the ground. That's what holds the ring that goes around the rocket. That's what they attach that ring to when it's loaded on the transporter. And they mount those here. And here's all the lines for draining nitrogen, oxygen, helium out of the booster. It's an interesting process. They keep getting better and better at it. Thanks for watching.